Hello friends, Rebecca here, the Dragon Librarian from Farmington Community Library, and my friend Arloth and I are here today to talk to you about a couple really fantastic books that we think you might really enjoy. They're both super different and really don't have anything to do with each other, um, but they just happen to be books I've recently read, um, two completely different genres um, that are just absolutely phenomenal and they're wonderful stories. So the first one I want to talk about I'm going to actually just sort of gush over this cover because isn't this amazing? Midnight Water City by Chris McKinney. Look at this cover. I'm not going to lie. The cover absolutely drew me in. It is phenomenal, isn't it? Everything about it just pulls the eye and grabs your attention. The other, <laughs> the other reason why I've recently read this book is because I've just recently become obsessed with the Netflix uh, TV series called Cowboy Bebop which takes place, uh, it's sort of this like um, noir crime fighting cowboy show that takes place in outer space in the future, which is based on an anime, a classic anime that's phenomenal. Um, so I've kind of had those types of stories in my head and this is sort of like that too. It's a police mystery set in the future, although it's not set in space, it's set on earth, a lot of it underwater. So basically in the year 2142 is where this takes place and there was this huge um, asteroid collision that was supposed to happen and this um, Japanese scientist named Akira disco discovered it and also discovered and manufactured the way to prevent it from happening with this laser that they shot up and they destroyed it. So everybody is now sort of this person Akira she is just a woman that is just pretty much counted as like the savior of the human race um so uh, most people now are living underwater in underwater cities um and Akira is, contacts a fr her friend which is the main character of the story uh, a police detective and says that she thinks that she's in danger of someone's trying to kill her and she um enlists his help in trying to protect her well when he goes to meet up with her to find out some more details about it she's already dead she's been murdered um and now he has to try to track down who would want to kill this savior of the human race basically why and all these other dark under undercurrents that are going on as well um if you're not, this is obviously, very obviously, a science fiction novel. But I would also tell you that if you're not the kind of person that likes science fiction, you will still enjoy the story because the science fiction is there, um, but they but they don't really go into too, too, too many sciency y -N -C, as I like to call it, details. So this is a pretty thin book, right? It's not very long. It's just about 300 pages. Um, so they do not get into a lot of technical stuff. They don't get into a lot of technical sciency jargon. Um, the main aspect and focus of the story is the mystery and the, this murder mystery. Um, who killed this person? Why would they do it? Um, and are they going to be able to be caught? right and brought to justice so that is the main focus of the story it happens to be set in the future and it happens to be set underwater but y if you're not really into science fiction i promise and you just really love mysteries and really good police thr thrillers you will still love this story i absolutely love it um it's super good and if you really want to add to the enjoyment of it i would highly recommend um putting on the cowboy bebop um, soundtrack while you're listening to it because it's like jazz, bluesy, folksy kind of music that just totally sets the environment for this. Love the story. Highly recommend it, even for people who are not a fan of science fiction. So the next story, completely way off from this one, couldn't be more different, is Still Life by Sarah Winman. This book I just love with everything that is in me. Um, I really was excited to hear about this book because I like Sarah Winman a lot. I've read her previous book called Tin Man and absolutely loved it. Um, this is a historical fiction book that really goes between the time periods of the end of World War II, so 1944, uh, all the way to the 1970s. And I, I will say right off the bat, this is not an this is not an intense fast paced book. This book is a slow burn, and that's what makes it so beautiful. The writing in this book is just absolutely breathtaking. It's so beautiful. I would really make an argument as to the main character of the story being Florence, Italy, because that is the the main pivotal point and focus of the story, and it's described in such beautiful detail 
that even if you've never been there, which I haven't, I've never been to Europe, um, I feel like I could describe it in so much detail because of that. Uh, I feel like I was there. I feel like I was eating the food and, and soaking up that sunshine and just enjoying this beautiful place. Um, so like I said, it is historical fiction. It starts with these two people meeting who um, normally would not cross paths. So it's Evelyn, this older woman who is an art historian who is in Florence, and she comes across the path of this um, British soldier named Ulysses. And they cross paths in the city in Florence and they strike up this friendship mostly dealing with their love of art and their love of just beautiful things and wanting you know camaraderie of wanting this war to be over so they go their separate ways after that and the story like I said it is a slow burn the story takes it just takes its time and it's so much the more beautiful because of it so then the story follows these two characters over the years, over the course of decades, follows these characters with their lives. Ulysses goes back to, um, to England, and so does Evelyn. Evelyn goes to London and their separate lives until they eventually come back together again in Florence. So it's just a beautiful story. It doesn't sound super exciting because, frankly, it's not. It's not an exciting novel. It's not an intense novel. It's not a... Um, fast-paced riveting novel but what it is is a very beautiful slow um it, it's basically like eating a really delectable meal slowly and then just enjoying it and just enjoying the afternoon and that's kind of what uh how I would describe feeling while I was reading this book it's just so beautiful like for example I just want to read this tiny little passage that describes um just a lunch just part of a lunch Evelyn turned her attention to the table. How the sun had cast its light in forced shadow across the debris of lunch. The jug of wine, the ashtray, the cigarette nubs with their faint ring of red lipstick, the vase of wisteria clusters, the sticky tide mark around the espresso cups, the image muted by the haze of dust falling from the makeshift trellis. A story of lunch, yes, but also a story of them. And the whole book is like that. It's just a beautifully told story. The language is gorgeous. Um, I feel like I said before, Florence, the city is is just really a, its own character in the story. It has its own life, its own expression, its own vibrancy. Um, and I really loved it. If you're looking for a book that is calming, that is beautiful, that just makes you feel good, I finished it a few days ago and I can't stop thinking about it. I want to read it again. I want to go back into this world with these characters and just have lunch with them and walk down the, the city, the you know, the cobblestone, cobblestone streets with them and just, you know, enjoy this beautiful uh, Italian air. Um, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Like I said, don't go into it thinking it's going to be really fast and that it's going, you're going to get through it really quickly. You want to really take your time with this book and just soak up every single bit of it. Still Life by Sarah Winman. Beautiful story. Well, that's what we've got for you guys today. I hope that these books sound amazing in their own right, even though they're super different from each other. There's something for everyone there, I think, in both of them. Um, we have them available at Farmington Community Library, so please give this video a like. Come in and see us. Take these books out. Check them out. And then I want to hear what you think about these books. Come and tell me what you think. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and have a wonderful rest of the day.